Внимание Советского Союза! Наши камеры, микрофоны установлены. Just kidding, guys. Today we're talking in English, even though uh, some people can be real dicks when they uh, don't want to read the title where it says Russian, and then they keep clicking all those dislikes. So to all those people, we say, you know, learn a foreign language. Anyway, since that one was so successful, I decided to do a similar Q&A, but in English. So now we can uh, anger Russian language speakers. And I got to tell you that plans for the future are to learn, relearn German or maybe Italian. And then I'm going to do some videos in that language. And this way we can um, anger both English language speakers and Russian language speakers. Today is uh, Thursday. I still haven't found a load. I still have balls in the fire and irons in the air, multiple irons in the air and multiple balls in the fire. And one particular load is a power only, which uh, like seriously they've been struggling to move and they've been raising the price. And we're just off by 500 US dollars. And they're going to give me an answer tomorrow. So if they say yes, they give me this 500 bucks I need. I will dead head into US and bring this uh, power only load to Canada. Anyway, so what I did is I have about um, what, like 1200 friends on Facebook and I posted a question there asking people to submit uh, I mean I posted a request asking people to submit questions so uh, the camera again is uh, Canon so it's limited to 29 minutes and 90 seconds thank you Canon for keeping us on our toes like who would want to talk for 60 minutes right 29 minutes and I already talked for probably five Question one from Trent Hager. How long have you been in Canada and how long have you been driving semi trucks? Mr. Hager, I've been in Canada since 1997 and I got my AZ or AZ uh, license that's required in Canada to drive semi trucks in, in late spring of 2005. Have you thought about getting a step deck trailer for additional loads? Ask is uh, ask Sherwood Starboard. And where do we get to meet Miss Captain D? Uh, sometimes I think about getting a second trailer, maybe something cheap and used flatbed step deck. Actually, as a matter of fact, I was you know I'm sitting there at this load board staring at my three loads available and nobody posts anything you know for a heavy haul for RGN trailer and I decided to run a search for step deck loads and you just you look at those rates and I'm telling you like if I'm get if I get angry looking at my loads and then once I open the step deck section and flatbed like the desire to get that trailer like disappears you know because you know just those early days when I was doing something for like dollar twenty five two dollars a mile forget it so I better stick to heavy haul you know I gotta wait sometimes or you know a week a couple of weeks but then I can I can make good money you know so what's the point of running around for you know two bucks a mile just burning fuel um, oh and uh, Miss Captain D uh, the position is open I was married a uh, couple of times when I was young. I married really young. I think I was like 19 years old back in the university in Russia. And that was for love. And then I tried another one, married a rich girl. And none of these worked. So I don't know what else is available. So 
I'm not a big believer in marriage, but you know, girlfriends, it's okay, but not marriage. Uh, Sherwood Stubber still cannot fall asleep. Uh, which load adventure was your favorite and least favorite? Uh, now I'm thinking mostly about the time when I became independent and you know when you when you are your own boss the measure of your success usually is the number at the bottom right corner of the invoice I'm sending to the customer and so my favorite load was that ugly machine from Laredo Texas going to Canada which paid so much money that I still remember and my least uh, but that one was a very difficult load because it was very hot in Laredo and they insisted on this being tarped and so I bought two tarps right and I was crawling around on top of that machine it was dangerous and it took me two days to load I couldn't do it in one day because it's just me right one guy and that thing was 11 feet tall so that was like pretty difficult load but at least I got you know good remuneration and my um, my least favorite load was that uh, John Deere what was it 450 like a big excavator I took to North Carolina I still remember it was about 800 miles and I spent I don't know two weeks because of all the permits and they paid me 6500 bucks us and i spent 3000 on permits so by the time I was, I was done i was like almost crying you know i was begging them to give me more money but they said i didn't do my research and i said wait so you knew that this load was cheap like why are you offering it you know at such a breakneck rate so basically anybody who takes it you you pretty much you're losing money right because I could have done two loads instead of this one in two weeks and I could have made two times more money right so so that was my I hate those guys and I'm gonna actually which reminds me I gotta look up that load because I have everything stored on my computer and just make sure I never work with that company again And some people were accusing me that, you know, I like changing rates. I don't change the rate uh, unless I don't ask them to change the rate unless it's something really, you know, you sit somewhere for, you know, crazy amount of time and nothing is happening and permits take forever. You know, uh, I, uh, my banks, my finan financial companies, like all these truck trailers agreements, right? They don't care. They get, they have to be paid every month right on the dot and just the nature of the beast you know they don't care about how many uh, how many dollars a mile i will make next month like if i'm sitting i'm not doing anything i need money you know i cannot just sit there and uh, because yeah most brokers will say hey anything because of permits like delays by caused by permits it's not our responsibility and sometimes you just you have to break the rules you know um, so that was my least favorite load because I spent 50% of what they paid me on permits. And when I delivered the machine, nobody even came out, said thank you, you know, or Mr. Dracha, we appreciate it. Like, they didn't care. Like, I felt totally unappreciated, you know, like this, uh, for example, this machine, uh, that Enviro Saver that I delivered in... Uh, Florida right there were guys there they were calling me you guys came out helping me unload you know I, I felt like a like a big cog in, in a you know in, in a, some big machine you know like it makes you feel nice and then you want to work with these people that appreciate you and uh, so the worst loads are loads where they give you like super cheap price and they know it's super cheap and basically they're laughing behind your back there and so everybody's making money be, uh, but me you know i'm just running kind of like at cost you know sometimes right well maybe once in a blue moon when there's no choice like with that uh, excavator and uh,
And somehow I knew that it would uh, it would ring, and that's why I put this phone next to me, you know. And of course, this is my buddy from Lansta is calling, so we're gonna turn off, put it in air airplane mode. Uh, and so yeah, so that's what's. Uh, those are my thoughts on favorite and least favorite load. Uh, what was your high and low point when you considered quitting trucking? Well, that probably was the worst point was when I uh, sold uh, the international truck and I was waiting for... Sorry, I'm just checking my position in the, in the screen. I love the screen on the side. So that when I sold the international and I, I didn't work for such a long time when I was waiting for the Mac and I had no money so that was the lowest point in my career and then the next point probably was when I was waiting for the Kenworth truck Some, so, somehow most difficult times are for me when I don't work you know when I sold the truck like this time right I sold the Mac in December and I got the new one in March and I was like looking for money everywhere and there was it was very difficult and that's what I thought, you know, probably maybe I should quit trucking and, and go and become a salesman, you know, like selling trucks. But, you know, things happen, you have to look on the bright side and something will, will always uh, turn up. Or as they said in a uh, famous Russian movie, Miesto Vstrich is Meet Nilsia, when the lady where these two guys were renting the apartment she got her uh, food coupons stolen and you needed coupons to buy to get food during the world war two in russia they were, they were like money all right there was no money you had coupons so you had to use that coupon and so somebody stole those coupons and, he, and she had like a bunch of kids and everybody's crying because there's no money for food anymore and this Vysotsky and uh, Sharapov and Zhiglov they gave her their coupons and their cops and Sharapov the younger guy says so what are we gonna do now and Zhiglov the older guy says da придумается что-нибудь something will turn up something will happen you know and that's the way I look at life you know like don't be too negative you know something will come up somebody will help you you know or the situation will change you gotta be positive and would you ever consider hiring a newbie to start tracking with box trailer? Any type dry cooler courting? I'm not sure. Uh, what what uh, this gentleman Jakisa Yakisa Yakisha? What he means? Uh, well, it depends. You see, when you're independent. Uh, Hiring practices depend on the tastes of my insurance company, right? They tell me what to do, like they have special requirements I have to follow, who to hire, who not to hire, you know, how much experience this person have, have, has to, to have, but I'm pretty sure they need some experience, but for now, you know, it's too much, uh, too much hassle with employees. Uh, I'd rather be my own, uh, you know, my own boss and, and, and the driver and the CEO and the president and, you know, and the janitor and the fleet manager. It just, it's a bit easier. Uh, TK Jerris, you've recently talked about when you moved to Canada. What did your family think when you told them? Well, by that time my dad died. And this was 97 and so I only had my mom and my younger brother and my mom of course she didn't like she didn't like it but she didn't she didn't try to persuade me because she said she went to this gypsy a long time ago and the gypsy you know like for uh, fortune telling fortune teller right and she says my mom says I knew a long time ago Serioshka so ты уедешь Sergey, I knew that you will you would leave, you know. So this gypsy told her that I would leave and I would live somewhere far away. And so she was like accepting her, you know, the fate, but she was very sad, you know. She's sad and now she's always asking me to when I when I when am I gonna see you? So I try calling her on the phone at least once a month, but now my Russian passport expired 
and I cannot go to Russia under my Canadian passport because I'm also a citizen of Russia and as I mentioned before uh, Russia has the rules where you have to come as a Russian citizen basically as far as the Russia is concerned they don't care how many citizenships you have but when you enter the country uh, Russian citizenship is kind of like primary okay so if I have Russian citizenship I cannot go as a Canadian like otherwise I could go to Russian consulate here in Canada get a visa buy a visa and go as a Canadian no they don't want that so now my Russian passport expired probably like a year ago and now everybody's saying uh, it takes like six months to get a uh, a renewed passport but I probably should do that uh, you know because I might go to Russia but I, I'm expect I'm hoping my brother would come to see me we tried to do it last year but now it's almost impossible for Russians to get a tourist visa to US but he can come to Canada so at least I can drive around with him show him the you know the Canada maybe just go on a long track from Eastern Canada all across Highway 1117, you know, towards Manitoba, Saskatchewan, then maybe go all the way to Rockies, Alberta, BC, in my fancy new car. So I hope he's uh, he'll find time next uh, this summer. But he doesn't want to live here. I asked him, I said, would you want to maybe come here and uh, live here? He says, no. Uh, I'm Russian, I cannot live somewhere like without the Russian language. He says, for me, it's very difficult. He went, of course, he goes on trips to like, he went to Portugal, he went to Cyprus, I think, Egypt, something like that. But he can only go there for like a brief period of time, like a one week, two weeks, right? He has to, you know, some people are like that, right? They just, they cannot live outside of their culture, right? So for me, it does not matter. I'm like a boat in the sea, you know, I can live anywhere. So... Um, uh, Moises Carrera says, have you thought about putting an owner on, on, have you thought about putting on, on operators? Yeah, I'm thinking about this sometimes, but like I said, it's very, it's a big hassle uh, with insurance company, with paperwork, you know, maybe later on. And plus I'm working off load boards. I don't have a steady supply of work. So it's hard for me to find a load for one truck for myself you know so if I had like two three owner operators I'd probably go crazy um, but it, it, it's definitely a good idea because that's how you know usually all these trucking companies that's how they start you know a guy buys a truck he starts working by himself then he starts hiring people and he works in the office you know but it's just it's a lot of work you know dealing with all the customs imagine like not, Whatever I do now, it'll, it'll be like times three or times four, you know, not necessarily more money because there'll be so many, so many expenses, you know, I don't know. Honestly, I'd rather keep it small and maybe when I retire, when I decide to retire, you know, I can, I uh, wanted to say drink beer at the fireplace, but I don't drink anymore, so... But maybe when I decide to retire finally from trucking, then I can just be like a broker and owner of this company and hire owner operators. Uh, Carolyn Nolan from New York City is asking, which has been your most challenging load to date and why? Well, I, I'm still thinking about that Laredo load where I had to tarp 11 foot tall with both tarps. Uh, it was a pretty difficult load, you know. Usually it's something big where you have, it's hard to secure those are challenging you know or when the weather is bad um, if you had the chance to have one of those airport tractors again would you would your current equipment be up to the task definitely now I can haul well up to 90,000 pounds 92,000 pounds it's a flat deck uh, if I was offered that load again I could definitely do it you know and that one was paying pretty good uh, TK Jerris is asking again, have you considered asking if you could put some sort of storage where you park the truck, like a 20 foot container? Yeah, I thought about it, but you know, that yard where I am right now is getting pretty busy 
actually they have lots of containers from this recycling company over there you know like before we used to park our car on the side and then I can leave with my truck but now basically when I leave I have to park the car in the same spot where my truck was so basically I have one spot and that's it uh, so maybe when I you know in the future I was thinking of getting some piece of land you know putting up some fencing and you know maybe get some kind of industrial or agricultural zoning land where I can park the truck and then maybe later like building a house small house I don't know with a bomb shelter just in case um, Jimmy Steele is asking I think in an early video you talked about what was needed to haul loads within the US work visa I'm assuming but could you touch on it again and why you don't do it to get more loads <laughs> that's my sincere reaction you know I'm just I'm reading this and it makes me laugh okay Mr. Steele, imagine you decided to go to Japan and work at a McDonald's. You know English, so you can flip the burgers, you know all the, all the names in English, because I'm pretty sure in Japan they, they still use American, like, burger, cheeseburger, right? So you show up there and you say, hey, I know English, I love McDonald's, I want to work at McDonald's, just to experience the Japanese culture. What do you think they're going to say? Oh... Uh, Mr. Steele, do you have any kind of a visa permit for work? No? Well, we're afraid you have to go back to your country and uh, deal with it. And then you go back and it probably takes like five years to get that visa. And by that time you lose interest in Japan. And you try again the same trick with Germany and it doesn't work again. Anyway, there's people here in the States, families. I talked to one taxi driver in Laredo, uh, he was uh, born in Mexico, but his parents brought him, somehow he got to US legally, I think he was born there, like his Mexican parents came to US, uh, he was born, so he became a citizen, then he had to go back, and his brother was born in Mexico, and they've been trying for five years to get that brother to US, and they cannot do it, you know, so this guy is a... Uh, cab driver driving a cab in Laredo he gave me a ride and his brother he says is educated he is a, he is an he's an engineer and from Mexico he cannot come to US even having a brother you know it's extremely extremely difficult one gray area is a Canadian truck is allowed to pick up loads and deliver loads inside US if the driver is an American resident and so if I ever hire wait a second what is the sound I'm looking at the screen Is that our focusing system? Hold on guys, just one second. <laughs> I think it's the focusing system. If it kept, if you hear that sound, please disregard, okay? But anyway, I was just thinking that that can be, uh, you know, if I ever decide to hire uh, an owner operator will probably be an American driver because then I can move loads inside Canada uh, inside US and then I can also move loads inside Canada, right? Wow, this thing is so noisy. How can you record how can you record videos if it does that? So basically you cannot move. Anyway, but I see that it's tracking my face. Um, anyway, so yeah, that would be good, you know, to have an American driver, like maybe run as a team. Well, not as a team, but like two guys, one American, one Canadian. And then we can do all kinds of loads, you know. I can do loads inside US. I can do, I mean, with the American guy driving. And then I can go across the border, you know. But where do you find a person like that? 
uh, Tony Ripick. What other job would you like doing if you were not a trucker? Well, I have two jobs, right? One is creating content for YouTube, which I really enjoy. I enjoy all these little cameras. Uh, I enjoy photography. You know, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy trucking. I enjoy driving cars. And so, if I wasn't if, if I wasn't a trucker, I would love continue traveling but now in my car so I probably just travel all over the place like Canada and US and create videos like I'm so addicted to the YouTube you know I cannot stop making videos even though you guys always leave me thumbs down uh, Andrew Lister do you think you will ever settle down to one truck one trailer configuration or do you think you will keep swapping and changing until your credit runs out uh, I'm just doing whatever is required to get to the top and make one million dollars a year. So whatever is required, we'll do that. For now it's building the system, you know, to multiple axle rig, so we can do, we can charge people a lot of money per mile. But I'm very far from that, so for now it's just 8 axle, 60 ton, right? because all this stuff is very expensive. Just to give you an idea, um, I was talking to a hail trailer asking about this spreader, you know, to convert my four axles to two plus two. You need Fontaine EQ2, Edward Quebec EQ2. Um, and I said, so what's the price? Basically, it's a piece of metal with some pivoting points and um, a couple of hydraulic cylinders. And so you can vary the pressure on the rear axles and it pivots so the rear wheels will turn. Actually, it's pretty cool. But guess what the price of that thing is? Brand new. If you buy that, it's about 10 feet long, but it has a different, it has a... Um, Kind of like a tap i would say right so it can run you can run it as a 10 foot long or you can run it as a 13 feet long or something it basically gives you two positions depending on which state you run in in order to get the maximum weight uh, allowance so that p without axles without tires just that metal piece is forty thousand us dollars i kid you not forty thousand um so, John Robinson is asking, which, and he spells it W-I-T-C-H, which, which is better, a Mac or KW? Thinking of getting one. Well, I would say definitely Kenworth. Kenworth is better, I think the engine is better, the emission system is better. Uh, I think service is better. Uh, there's much more dealerships, I think. You know, it's easier to get the repairs done on the road. Uh, and Max don't allow you, um, I think now they allow you 16,000 on the front, but when I was buying mine, that was the thing I really disliked, is that uh, only 14,600 14, was available as a front axle. And then Volvo, who owns Mac, decided to you know graciously allow people to use 16,000 pound Volvo axle on the front but basically what I learned is what you should know if you're considering a Mac is that Volvo wants people to buy Volvo trucks they only keep Mac trucks that they bought uh, to get access to the network of dealers right so before they only had Volvo dealerships right then they bought the Mac out, so now they sell Volvos through all these Mac dealerships, so basically everything is covered. But still I think there's more Kenworth dealers than, than uh, Mac and Volvo dealers. But the main focus of Volvo is for, they want people to buy a Volvo truck. And unless you're really poor or you want like a budget truck, so that's what the Mac is a budget truck. You know, that's how they set it up. Sorry, 
the camera stopped recording and I saw a message on the screen to your to your left saying the recording has stopped maximum recording time has been reached and I, I, I saw at the time it was like 29 minutes 30 seconds so but I'm almost done here so I think this was the last question but what about the Mac and the Kenworth so basically yeah the way Volvo set it up is that you don't get as many options on the Mac you know so basically if you're considering a Mac or Kenworth that's the kind of wrong uh, choice because then you, sh you should better consider Volvo versus Kenworth okay and I remember Volvo when I was looking at that and actually I, I, a guy offered me a great deal on a heavy hull Volvo with a big engine you know, it, it had a big front axle and um, and he says I will give you this price because it was the last year uh, I think it was when I got this what uh, 2018 right it was 20 right after I sold my Mac I was talking to this Volvo guy in uh, Cambridge but I couldn't do it you know I didn't have financing but he was giving me a crazy price it was a it was a great you know Volvo uh, heavy haul truck and after that uh, they they with a big 605 horsepower right and uh, and only later I, I understood why he was giving me a big uh, discount because that was the last year they were when they were offering 605 horsepower you know I think now it's only like 550 with the same so basically I think they changed yeah they kept the engine the same big engine but they reduced the horsepower uh, and the only thing I did not like is that I don't like the steel cab that Volvo has a steel cab so it's heavy most other guys have aluminum cabs right like the Kenworth so it's lighter and it does not rust like I'm in Canada right it's always cold and lots of salt on the road so so if you were choosing again so if you're choosing between Kenworth and Mac I better choose between Volvo and Kenworth and Kenworth is definitely better because it's lighter it's aluminum cab uh, and Kenworth has uh, much more options it's, it's a really custom uh, custom truck like honestly I don't have experience uh, specking a Volvo or well I did spec a Volvo right so the guy gave me a spec it was it was sitting ready to go uh, it, well, I think he put in even like uh, 18 speed automated tr automatic transmission that I shift you know uh, it would be not a bad truck but for me I was looking at this T800 right I wanted to get a truck with a bigger radiator and I wanted to have these um, air cleaners you know for, again for cooling for heavy loads but of course for that 55 ton trail I did not need it but for real heavy loads you know soon I'm gonna start hopefully I'm gonna start the next couple of years I'm thinking I'll start hauling 110 115 thousand pounds and this small radiator on my T880 you know can be a problem because a friend of mine who works for Landstein, he pulls this 10-12 uh, axle rigs. He wanted to buy the same T880 uh, in the States. And Kenworth told him that he cannot go over 200,000 gross, 200,000 gross uh, pounds, you know, with a T880. He was advised to buy a T800, the older model, but with a big, you know, radiator, like the wide uh, wide version you know wide radiator and because of that that's why I didn't buy a Volvo because it had a small radiator just like my T880 and it had no air cleaners and because I wanted T800 but then when the time came to buy T800 and time was of essence right I couldn't wait four months sitting on my butt without the truck and then the sales guy says uh, T800 would take I think he said like four weeks longer because it T800 was made by mostly by by guys by people whereas the T880 is like almost fully automatic line you know like conveyor built by robots you know and so I went for that and I still feel okay it's a cool truck but I don't know what's gonna happen when I start pulling like real heavy loads but I, I need I'll worry about that bridge when I come to it but for now it's it's fine it's a great truck so 
um, there's no comparison between the Mac and the um, and the Kenworth. Like Mac had that, that big um, heavy hold truck. Remember what was it? Uh, I forgot. But that one didn't have a sleeper. Like they only offered it as a day cab, you know, with a big engine, uh, big uh, front axle, like a nice, cool-looking truck. But there was no, there was no sleeper. And then they discontinued the truck, right? I don't know. I would get a Kenworth. Anyway, um, let me check if there's any other. Are there any other questions? Well, I think I covered all. Let me just refresh the page over here. Uh, okay, how long I've been in Canada? Da -da -da -da, getting a step deck, high low point, owner operators, uh, buying a container, getting a permit for US. Yeah, I think that's it. My internet just died over here. So anyway, so if you guys uh, like, we'll do it once in a while. This kind of questions. Uh, so don't be shy. Next time uh, I, I post like a request like this, just you know, ask me the questions because I don't like wasting time and uh, writing comments. I do read comments and sometimes I do reply, right? But it's easier to do it in a video. We can cover a whole bunch of questions and add your own little thoughts, you know. So I think it, it's more interesting when it's uh, done in a, in a form of a video. So, so that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And so tomorrow I will know if I have this uh, power only load. If they agree to my 500 bucks, then Monday I'll be loading somewhere in uh, somewhere near Chicago. All right. Sorry for the focusing thing. Uh, I don't know yet if it's uh, audible or not, but it's a bit annoying how this camera. Although you see the lens, it's not the camera, uh, because my previous videos I was recording with a, with a Canon 10 to 18 millimeter, and and the only reason I and then I bought this Sigma mostly for like photography and maybe video in uh, in uh, low light. And this is my first time I'm using the Sigma 35mm 1.4 and I see that it's not very good for video because first of all it doesn't have stabilization and secondly you see it, it keeps doing this with a focus so uh, I can use it but next time I'll just uh, switch I'll focus and switch the focus to uh, to manual because I can do it from the screen because it's a touch screen I can just touch the screen on my face it'll focus and then I'll Turn off the 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 automatic focusing, but that's just ridiculous, you know. Like, why? What's wrong with these guys, right? Why are you? No, no, it looks. You yeah, see, it makes that noise. Like I'm not moving, right? I hardly move my head, and the lens. So now I know it's not the camera. The lens keeps shifting the focus. Anyway. So thanks for watching, sorry for the long video, uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and the weekend is coming, Friday is tomorrow. Okay,